Like, seriously, I thought chess was boring until I came across the Danish Gambit. That improved my tactical vision and impressed my eyeballs. This video is divided into four parts. Number one, where black takes all the three pawns. Number two, where black only takes two pawns. Number three, where black only takes one pawn. And number four, where black calls you a clown and decline your Gambit. But before I start, let me show you where I got the inspiration from with this insane gambit. I first saw this idea in the Dutch defense after d4 and pawn to f5. My ex-girlfriend taught me this idea of sacrificing all my kingside pawns like this where black takes and you don't take back on f3 but you just mind your own business and let black take you. Oops, two of my pieces are under attack. But she taught me to save the bishop, allowing black to promote into an AK-47 if he wants. And this is how quickly the game can end after queen h5 check. And of course, black cannot block this check with his elbow. G6 is the only move, after which you suck your queen and mate with the bishop. Well, in which case, she is the queen I sacrificed. And that's how she became my ex. Anyways, that was childish. Now let's look at the Danish. Enough of this rubbish. So number one, I call this the three pawns accepted, where you begin with e4, and black should respond with e5, cause what else? Then you go d4, not yet the Danish. This is the center game, then black should take, that's pawn number one. Then you go c3, sacrificing pawn number two. Then finally, bishop c4, sacrificing pawn number three. And that's when we take the pawn on b2. As you can see in the Leech's database, Bishop b4 check is the top played move, but you go knight c3 blocking the check. Knight f6, then you reinforce with another knight, then black can either castle short or take the fourth pawn, which is a blunder. Because now you can simply castle short, and after knight takes, knight takes, the top played move, as you can see, is castle short in the leech's database, after which you go knight d5 attacking the bishop. And again, look, bishop c5 is by far the top played move. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, this is what you tell the spectators cause the game is now over. Simply go knight f6 check and the only good move for black is to give up his queen. Otherwise, gf invites queen g4 check and after king h8, you go queen h4, double attacking the f6 pawn with your dark squared bishop on b2. If rook g8 by black, the queen on d8 falls after bishop takes f6 check. And if bishop e7, what well, now it's the h7 pawn and see that the pawn on f6 is pinned to the king and black can stop this checkmate with his toes. And so let's see what else can happen after knight f6 check. Instead of gf, black can also play king h8. But hey, you just go knight takes h7, attacking the rook. And if king takes, you go queen h5 check. And after king g8 only move, there's a mate in 4 in this position. Up to you guys to find and leave your answers in the comment section down below. Shout out to every one of you guys who managed to solve my last puzzle in the video that has popped up in the card above. Shout out to John Nash, GE Baby, Nighting Moraka, Mike Mog. Damn, you make it look so easy. Oh, that was a comment. But hey, shout out Danny Sarel too. Now, back to business. So again, after knight f6 check, then king h8 and knight takes h7, attacking the rook. If black doesn't take the knight, and let's say he plays rook e8, you still got queen h5. And if king g8, that'll be a mate in two after queen takes f7 check. And it doesn't matter where the king goes, that'll be met. Anyways, back to our three pawns accepted line in the Danish Gambit, where you take back on b2 with your bishop. And after bishop b4 check, the most played move, you go knight c3 once again, knight f6, knight e2. Now this is the combination that you always want to remember in the Danish Gambit. The knights have to be defending each other in this way. And always remember that knight takes e4 is a blunder, cause you can simply castle short, allowing black to take, and you already know what happens if black castles short. And still, if they take, you just take back on c3. And let's say castle short, you go queen g4. Again, there's a mating four that black cannot stop with his elbow. Well, if g6, just go queen d4 and the game is over. If black chooses not to give up his knight and bishop after you castle short and let's say they take with a bishop first and after you take back, they retreat their knight back to f6. Well, just continue normally with rook e1 check. And if king f8, you got knight d5. Knight takes and queen takes d5. Once again, there's an unstoppable checkmate on f7. Anyways, and so after taking back on b2, 
b2 you may not see your opponent playing bishop before this time they may play the second most played move knight to f6 yes the normal move is e5 but who wants to be boring in 2023 we play knight c3 keeping the possibility of transposing back into the lines that we already looked at but this time if Blood doesn't take with his knight or with his bishop and let's say he just goes back to f6 or you can just go queen b3 and take the bishop and also the f7 pawn so if bishop takes you first of all play an in between move check and after king f8 that's when you take back on c3 queen e7 you bring back your bishop and continue playing as highlighted done now we look at the two pawns accepted e4 e5 the center game first pawn taken c3 second pawn taken and after bishop c4 black refuses to take the third pawn and let's say they go knight f6 counter attacking the pawn on e4 well we are going to force them take the b2 pawn by playing knight e2 oh gosh but they can take the e4 pawn well queen d5 is not the idea in this position because black is simply winning if we play this so the move to remember is bishop takes f7 after king takes that's when you go queen d5 check making black lose his right to castle and you don't even take the knight you first of all give a check on h5 to force the black king to come to e7 so that after queen e5 check black cannot block the check with his queen and we'll be able to win the knight if we want we can force the draw from here just queen d5 check and queen h5 queen d5 queen h5 queen e5 but to play for a win queen takes e4 is okay and after queen e7 you don't trade off your powerful queen with your opponent's weaker queen anyways so after knight takes e4 and bishop suck on f7 king takes queen e5 check king e8 then queen h5 check instead of king e7 black may play pawn to g6 blocking the check and that's when we win the rook on h8 in this style well if cb we just take back with the bishop and life goes on therefore in the two points accepted line once again where you play bishop c4 and black plays knight f6 don't forget to play knight e2 because your e4 pawn is safe and again if they take on b2 you can easily transpose this back into the previous lines that we have already looked at anyways so after you play knight e2 this time black may not take on b2 or on e4 but maybe play bishop c5 right away well once again just castle short if they take on b2 the game will just transpose back again if knight takes e4 we have bishop suck and after king takes we have queen d5 once again and let's check so king f8 we simply take the knight this time and move on with life another check king g8 knight takes b3 done now we look at the one pawn accepted line after e4 e5 and pawn to d4 then black takes and after c3 they don't take the second pawn and rather play knight f6 right away the easiest you can do here is just to play pawn to e5 and after knight d5 you don't even take the pawn immediately you can develop your knight first because if dc that will hang the knight on d5 and if d6 the whole idea is to take on d4 with a queen and then take on e5 with a knight that's the only thing you need to remember in this line if bishop e6 you have bishop c4 knight c6 like black is attacking your queen just take that knight and after bc you simply cast a shot leaving black with doubled isolated pawns along the c file so once again if black doesn't take your second pawn and instead play knight f6 it is up to you to play e5 but i like bishop c4 this line will still make you remain with equal number of pawns but with a slightly questionable position let's say after knight takes e4 the only good option is to suck your bishop once again and after king takes you go queen h5 check g6 queen d5 check and after king g7 you take the knight the only downfall is queen e7 you need to exchange queens and accept to remain with an isolated pawn on d4 but in the one pawn line if black doesn't take on e4 and instead take on c3 with his d pawn well now you can go back to whatever we have looked at beginning with knight e2 again because you still want black to take on b2 after which you take back with a bishop and once again we are just back to our main position of the danish gambit after we cast a shot anyways now we look at the decline variation where black doesn't take anything so e4 e5 but black then d4 and black plays knight f6 or knight c6 or d6 let's have some fun if knight to f6 simply take on a5 and after knight takes e4 remember this move you guys queen e2 yes 
Blocking the light squared bishop cause we want to castle long. Knight c5 is the only sensible move. After which you go knight c3. Our plan is very simple just to develop our minor pieces and put the pawn on f4 after castling long. Later on we are going to start expanding on the king side and mate black as soon as we can. Okay. Instead of knight f6, if black plays knight c6, simply start expanding on the center. Go knight f3. This is now the names of wish defense. They'll play knight g6. The best you can do against the names of wish is to go h4. And after h5, just remember to play pawn to a3 to stop bishop b4 check so that later on you can now develop your knight safely and after bishop c5 you simply pin the knight on f6 d6 bishop e2 much better than bishop d3 because of the possible bishop g4 by black and after a6 the plan is to go knight d2 and knight b3 develop your queen and castle long done and lastly instead of knight f6 or knight c6 if black plays pawn to d6, don't take on e5, play this funny gambit you guys, knight to f3, and if they take on d4, you don't take back, play this like the scorch gambit, bishop c4, this is the filetto defense morphe gambit, if knight f6, you simply take back on d4 with your queen, but there is this line where you play pawn to c3, but if black takes on c3, there is this unsolvable position with queen b3 attacking the f7 pawn and the b7 pawn if queen e7 protecting the f7 pawn and also attacking the e4 pawn, you simply take on b7 and there's absolutely nothing that black can do to save his rook on a8. Ladies and gentlemen, if at all you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if at all you haven't already because that's how you encourage me to keep on making more wonderful videos just like this one and don't forget to check out my courses at www.casperchase.com which are very affordable at the moment and sign up for my free masterclass as well hope to see you soon in my next video bye bye